So he sent out a Snapchat of the Pope driving by in his little Pope mobile. Oh, really? like, hey! So it's like he waved to me on there. Like, hey, what's up, Dan? Yeah, that's it. You're going to heaven now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Not that you already weren't, but I was already going. Now I have a VIP. So now you have a VIP pass. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 40 of the Scruffcast. I'm Dan. And I'm John. And we're back, and this has taken us three tries already to get this thing going. We had to shake off the rust a little bit. A little technical difficulties. But it it a little... happens to everybody, you know? I mean, like, it happens. It happens. It's been a while. It has been a while. It, it was like back in the 80s with Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I, I haven't heard this story we before. We Please tell me. We haven't gone through this this take once or twice. <laughs> Back in the 80s with Coca-Cola, uh, listeners out there may remember, they did away with the original Coke, and they came out with new Coke, and everybody was like, oh, this new Coke sucks, and they, nobody liked it. Then they brought back the original Coke and called it like Coca-Cola Classic, and then everybody was like all over it, and they loved it even more than before. Now, I think I read before that this whole thing was actually planned and the new Coke was intentionally shitty. Or maybe not, I don't know. To get people hyped about the old Coke? Yeah. But either way, this is very similar to that, except our new Coke was just nothing for four months. And our original Coke is just us back again, stumbling through this three times. We've had some bad podcasts in the day. We've had some rough ones. Yeah, it's it doesn't always go perfect. Sometimes, um, you know, this some, one might be up there. You know, because like in the back of our minds, we think we still have it, but we probably don't. You know, yeah, maybe we're old and washed up. Like, uh, I don't know who. What like athlete, old and washed up people? Yeah, what athlete came back and he was old and washed up and he couldn't do it anymore? Kind of like that. All right. Anyways, we're back. Four months later, we're sorry we left you for so long. And guess what? Four months, and none of you wrote in to scruffcast at Not email. even a single person in four months. With your question to ponder answers from last week. Jesus four Christ. Four months ago. All right. So All right. the question to ponder from four months ago yes. is, if you could ask your future self from the year 2050 one question, what would it be, John? So we almost made it to 2050 before answering the question. Because that's how long it's been since we did the podcast. Oh! That's the sort of humor they've missed. So, my future self from 2050, I think I would ask if humans have finally made it to Mars. Have we landed on okay. Mars? And if so, like, what was it like? Are people living up there now? Because if oh. I ask my future self and he goes, no, we haven't really done anything, I'll be like... How bummed are you going to be? Man, that's a bummer. Yeah. Because I'm thinking they'll get there in like 10 years. I hope so. Not even. So then another 20 years after that it's got to be booming over there we might be living there maybe 2050 now they're gonna send the people young and spry we're already too old now <laughs> scruff cast live from mars yeah with a 20 minute delay <laughs> yeah <laughs> unless you're also on mars with us then that'll be no delay i think no. i don't know how space works <clears throat> all right dan what would you ask yourself i would ask my future self if the toronto maple leafs have won the stanley cup yet that's what it would be. The burning question. Yeah, because you'll be almost at 100 years then if they haven't. Oh, boy. It'll be rough. It'll be at, what, 83 yeah. years? Oh, Jesus. Damn. Yeah. Listen. Uh, now I'm sad. Well, you and never... I'm also sitting on the squeakiest chair on the planet here. It's comfy, though. I hope. I hope no one can hear it. Oh, it's super comfy. It's a comfy it's chair. Also super Yes, squeaky. we're in a new studio space as well. That's why I took Studio number months. three. Because we had extensive renovations and got new chairs. Squeaky chairs. Squeaky chairs. The squeakier they are, the comfier they are. That's just the way chairs go. That's what my grandma used to say. <laughs> oh, oh, Granny. So oh, smart. Oh, Granny. She knew her chairs. <laughs> well, what do grandmas do? They sit around. So what's what's happened in the past four months? Because like, this is like a weekly podcast, so like we never really missed out on <laughs> well, things. It, it was a weekly podcast. <laughs> it was a it weekly was. podcast. Um, now, like, we were pretty good about our schedule, and yeah, we just randomly went on a four-month hiatus. Four months ago, okay, in the past four months, what's happened? So to clue the listeners in, uh, me, I moved to our new studio space here. 
Yeah, so it's not not really a new that, studio. That, it's just John's apartment. That's yeah. it. Um, that's about it for me. Not much going on. But Dan, I had a baby. I didn't deliver him myself. I didn't actually have it, but my fiance had a baby. It was a boy, and he's awesome, fantastic. Number number one fan of the Scruff. Number one fan of the Scruff cast. Getting a Scruff cast onesie. He doesn't know it yet, but he's the number one fan. Yep. <clears throat> Listeners, you got to step up your game. Yeah, he's doing great. You know what? Write in questions too, asking about him. You know, I'm I'm gonna be one of those like parents that all they want to do is like I'm gonna be the one posting on the Instagram and stuff about yeah. just just the baby and that's it. Look at him. He ate his first Cheerio this week. If, Hashtag bless. If anyone needs parenting advice, just come to me. <laughs> and then you'll forward the questions to <laughs> to Anna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you forward the questions to her, and then come back and be like, oh, look at all this stuff yeah. I know. Because yeah. It's three months of experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. Marijuana became legal in Canada. Yes, that's true. Um, what what else has happened? <laughs> well, the new year rolled over into 2019. Yeah, it's 2019 now. Trump is still president. Yes. Just catching up on our current affairs here. What else happened? Oh, the government shut down in the U.S. for a while. Are they still shut down? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but they were shut down at least for a while. Yeah. Well, what right. else? They might still be. I feel like some others. Four months. Oh, Christmas passed. We missed out on the chance to do a scruff cast Christmas episode. You know what? I'm not going to lie to everybody at home. That's the reason I didn't want to do this podcast. John loves Christmas so much. I know we'd have like a month's worth of Christmas episodes <laughs> on the podcast. And I just tried to avoid that. So I kept telling him, like, oh, you know, just super busy with the kid. Can't do it till the new year. Oh, I've already. So got- I didn't want to do Christmas episodes. I've already got my idea for the Christmas episodes for this year. Gonna get, tell, gonna get, tell get ready for another four month hiatus coming yeah. next October. G- gonna tell my uh, Christmas stories of how I ruined Christmas for myself when I was in the sixth grade. But anyways, you gotta that's, wait. You that's gotta, for next year. Yeah. yeah, you gotta you gotta wait till the end. That could have been that. two months ago, but now it's next year's yeah. story. All so right. well, I guess the good the good thing about us taking such a long break is we've built up. Quite. A juicy amount of articles. Yes, some uh, some pretty good ones. Yes. If we skip to the first item I have in my notes, actually, it says Spooktober is in full force <laughs> because that's how long ago it was that we made <laughs> we made the notes <laughs> because we were right in the midst of I Spooktober. Know. How many holidays have we missed? Jesus. Well, we well you know, that's another one. I'm happy we didn't have to do is a Halloween one. Yeah. Wasn't that like our first episode? Was a Halloween? Was the second episode? one? We did a. We actually second did a little one. spoiler cast for Stranger Things season. Oh two. yeah. And they yeah. still haven't aired season three. It's coming back in the summer. Pfft, lame time. No, you haven't watched it though, have you? Things. Yeah. Oh, I thought it'd be too scary. No, I can handle a little bit of spookiness. A little spooky. A little spooky. A little spooky is okay. Not too All spooky right. though. All right. It's been about eight minutes. Shall we get into the articles? I think so we can that's ramble on list. for another couple, at least. Well, I'm free to ramble if <laughs> you'd like kidding. to ramble. Um, it snowed a lot here recently. Yeah. All right, that was a good All ramble. right, that's, yeah, okay. We're moving on here. <laughs> on to the articles. So, as always, um, we don't vet the articles, right? We just see the headlines, throw them into the news. Sometimes they suck. Yeah. Sometimes they're good. But and especially with no plan of actually doing the podcast at any point, we really didn't read these articles. Yeah, we're just tossing them in We just in threw there. them in there, so... Uh, we're gonna pull them out and see what happens. And like you guys know how this goes, we do this yeah. often, and sometimes it goes well, and sometimes it doesn't. So uh, let's hope this goes well. We'll see how it goes. So the first article actually, uh, this came from Dan because in the four months he's taken a bit more of a religious turn in his life, and he, he found this article and he said, "Look at what my people can do." <laughs> and I said, "Oh, Dan, I'm pretty impressed." This comes from AP News. Vatican launches track team of Swiss guards and nuns. That's right, folks. You heard it here first. You heard it here. The Vatican's Olympic team. You heard it here first three months ago. (laughs) Three months after the article came out. Three months after the article came out, so you've probably all heard this already. Vatican City, AP. The Vatican launched an official track team Thursday. Uh, Who knows which Thursday this was? It was months ago. Could have been one of the 16 that have passed. With the aim of competing in international competitions as part of an agreement signed with the Italian Olympic Committee. About 60 Holy Sea runners, Swiss (laughs) guards, priests, nuns, pharmacists. Pharmacists? Pharmacists? And even, oh, th- this is how the Catholic Church is making so much money. They're they're part of the pharmaceutical industry, the, too. They're part of big pharma. Well, you know, the old ladies, they go in for the confessions, and they go, oh, it's not looking good. you got to get some... Uh, Here's some that? Percocets. Percocets. you got to get some $100. Ro- Robax or whatever that yeah. thing is. 
You know the one with the, the little wood man? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the pin man. on the back? Yeah. yeah. One of those. So a pharmacist, even a 62-year-old professor who works in the Vatican's apostolic library, oh, yeah, are the okay. first accredited members of Vatican Athletics. It's the latest iteration of the Holy See's long-standing promotion of sport as an instrument of dialogue, peace, and solidarity. I, I long-standing promotion of sport. I've never seen them talk about sports at all. Yeah, no. If you read the Bible, there's uh, a couple of passages in the Old Testament that talk about Jesus. Uh, They're playing like street- playing basketball. Yeah, yeah. Well, he he could dunk. Who who's gonna block Jesus? First off, he just blow right past you. Second off. Are you going to block Jesus? He's going to yeah. shoot you a look, and you're going to be like, I'm going to hell. <laughs> he was the, be- the best 3 and D of the uh, <laughs> of the AD era. <laughs> or or BC era, whatever. Yeah. From Jerusalem. <laughs> That's what they'd say when he's taking a three-pointer. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, Mad from, Devlin. From the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how. <laughs> and I, you, you're telling me he's, he's playing fair and square? No way. Mm. No way. His, his shot, it would be like automatic. Right, he's shooting it, and he's just performing miracles. Um, before I was walking on water, now I'm walking on you bitches. <laughs> <laughs> just dunking on them. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stuff that people have missed. So because of the agreement with uh, CONI, I don't know what this is, an acronym, C-O-N-I, the team is now part of the Italian, Italian Track <laughs> Association, is looking to join the Italian Association of Athletic Federations. Hoping to compete in international competitions, including the Games of the Small States of Europe, open estates states with fewer than 1 million people, and the Mediterranean Games. The dream that we have often had is to see the Holy Sea flag among the delegations at the opening of the Olympic Games. This is funny, because, like, you forget that the Vatican is a city. Or a country, sorry. Yeah, I it's like, a city, it's like the world's smallest in terms of population. Right? Yeah, so it's kind of funny, because, like... They're putting this like little track and field team. It's like an elementary school track and field team putting together with like the librarian and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, oh, can Mrs. Walker? <laughs> can she run? What if the Pope's getting in? Like, is the Pope gonna? He's carrying the torch on the little Pope mobile, <laughs> right? Yeah. He's coming up with a flag. Cause come on, the Pope. It'd be like similar to playing basketball against Jesus, but not as extreme. Yeah, I guess. Who wants to beat the Pope? Right. Well, it's funny. My, my fiance's uh, brother was just in Panama yeah. for World Youth Day. So he sent out a Snapchat of the Pope driving by in his little Pope mobile. Oh, really? like, hey! So it's like he waved to me on there. Like, hey, what's up, Dan? Yeah, that's it. You're going to heaven now. Yeah, pretty much. Not that you already weren't, but... I was already going, but now I have, now I have a VIP seat. Now you have a VIP pass. Yeah. <clears throat> um, let's see. So the article continues. Oh, it says, we might even podium... <laughs> So yeah. they have they have yeah, high with, hopes. with your sixty two year old professor, you're gonna podium. Maybe, maybe it's like a... Usain Bolt's gonna come in and come in there. Yeah, put y'all down, man. <laughs> you think you're seeing speed, boy? <laughs> you Just... better bring Jesus out here. That's the only way you're gonna beat me. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be running so fast. They're gonna be praying for Jesus. <laughs> right? You're gonna be spooked. Like think about it. Like in back in Jesus' time, imagine somebody was like that quick. They'd be like, oh, damn, this this boy, he's haunted. Yeah, he, Jesus, yeah. you got to do something about this. <laughs> he would have been crucified Oof. right next He'd to him. He'd smite him into a pile of dust. Yeah. Um, the article continues to just talk about how excited they are. Um, <laughs> I, I can't get this vision yeah. out of my head of, of a nun. Of, no, of Jesus starring in the next Space Jam. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven Jam. <laughs> it's just like, oh, man. All right. All right. All right, have we, have we made uh, enough, yeah, yeah. Fun of, enough fun of Jesus? Yeah, okay, let's right. move on. Oh, but there's a fun fact in the article here. Uh, St. John Paul II, the former pope, was an avid skier. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> Good for him. All right. On to the next article here. What do we have? It's like article roulette. I forget what's yeah, in this article. Yeah, you gotta, I don't know what's up next. A query, this comes from CBC News. Aquarium skinny dipper wanted for earlier violent assault. Extremely oh. dangerous stunt jeopardized staff and marine animals, police say. This comes from all the way back in October. A man who swam naked among sharks at Ripley's Aquarium of Canada in downtown Toronto late Friday, four months ago, is wanted in connection with a violent assault earlier in the evening, police said. Police have identified him as David Weaver, 37, of Nelson, British Columbia. Jeez, they just like put this guy on blast. Yeah. 
He is wanted for assault causing, causing bodily harm. Believed to be driving green Dodge Caravan with the BC license plate. Man, they're putting it all out there. Oh, they even put a license yeah, plate out there. PL120G. Well, they have weird license plates out, in, out there. Please say he's five foot ten. Okay. Uh, oh, he has a goatee, a shaved why, head, yeah, why do goatee, we need to and missing stuff? teeth. <laughs> Poor guy. Police spokesperson uh, said investigators from the city's west end and downtown fifty two division connected the incidents on Monday. These all take place. Okay, talk, tell me about what this guy did with the sharks. To give me this breakdown of his criminal life. Yeah, I know. Uh, see this, these articles. We had four months to vet these, and we didn't. And here uh, we are. A minute long video. Oh, wait, hang on. The assault took place outside the medieval t- outside the medieval times attraction at exhibition place <laughs> around eight p.m. And the victim suffered serious injuries. Police said. Uh, so he, we know what happened. He went to medieval times, had a little too much of the ale. He was getting into it <laughs> and and hopped into the stadium and yeah started fighting with the swords. It's believed the assailant fled, headed to the aquarium around five kilometers east. Officers were called to the popular tourist attraction two hours later. You, you know what this guy had? He had one of those city passes, you know. Where yeah, you get to go see all the attractions, yeah, the yeah. CN Tower, the Ripley's, Medieval Times, Casa Loma. Yeah, and, and he's a nice like, boat only, tour. He's like, I've only got one day to do this all. I'm normally I from got, British I Columbia. Do, yeah, I got I to gotta do all this stuff. So he jumped out of Medieval Times, sprinted over there. A minute-long video sh- shot at the aquarium and posted on YouTube shows a man taking off his clothes, diving into the dangerous lagoon. That's like a proper noun. So that's the name of this tank. A 2.9 million liter tank that offers an underwater gallery to dozens of marine animals, including 17 sharks. The man can be seen doing the breaststroke on the surface of the water, while sand tiger sharks swim within centimeters of his feet. Green sawfish, green sea turtles, green moray eels, everything is green here. And other species of tropical fish are also housed in the tank, according to the aquarium's website. Security personnel asked the man to leave shortly before 10.30, but he refused. According to a <laughs> spokesperson from Toronto Police Service. So they just came in like, sir, come on, can you please get out of the tank? No, <laughs> he, he's I'm like, not leaving. They're like, ah, oh, man. And he's just <laughs> he's just sitting there doing the breaststroke. And they're like, they're like, well, we're not going to get in there. It's a dangerous lagoon. And he's naked. Yeah. They don't, don't want to jump in there. Try to grab him. He's slipping all over the place. Whoa, is that coral? <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> so instead he swam he swam to the edge of the enclosure emerged from the tank before doing a backward flip into the water oh that's awesome <laughs> this man was balling out <laughs> literally here and, and police were called a uh, visitor said she heard the big splash how fat was this guy and thought the trainers were feeding He's the sharks 5'10 um, as a visitor and her boyfriend ap- approached she said they saw a man in the water the guy seemed totally relaxed and there were like sharks like everywhere she told CBC Toronto. He appeared to be totally nude and, like, laughing. This reminds me of that guy who did a uh, working out nude at Everybody's Fitness or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, I thought it was a judgment-free zone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what would possess someone to do that. It's totally insane to me, the visitor explained. I was scared I was going to witness the death of this guy. <laughs> they actually got a picture of, of the guy. <laughs> it's just I mean, They got a couple here, yeah. Um, before the officers arrived, man got out of the water. The video showed him walking past security, standing on the edge of the tank, jump the gate, slip into a crowd of onlookers. Like, nobody's going to notice the wet, naked guy. The wet, the wet naked He's guy. Like, I'm blended in perfect. Uh, where a woman appeared to be holding his clothes. His accomplice, I, I suppose. Really? He put them on, left the aquarium at the request of security. No marine animals were harmed, but the stunt was extremely dangerous. And they actually have a picture here of him with the onlookers trying to slip through the crowd. Jumping over a gate, but like butt naked. So wait, he actually like he didn't get arrested for doing this. The security just asked him to leave. That was it. They, it says they called the police when he did his backflip. So they came in and they're like, "Sir, will you please stop?" And he's like, "Nah," and he kept swimming. And then he went to the edge of the tank and does a pro- backflip. And they're probably like, "Oh, he's getting out." And then he's like, "Fool, yeah," does a backflip back <laughs> in. So like, ah, crap, we gotta call Fooled the police. Yeah. And then I guess he's like, "All right, I'm getting out." And that's it. I guess he never really got busted. Honey, where are my clothes? Yeah. All right. On to the next mystery article here. Listeners, I know you've been loving this. Email us at scruffcast at gmail.com and tell us. Send us your much, articles. How much you're enjoying the return. Send us your answer to the question to ponder. Yeah. Send us your questions to ponder. Yeah, and if you're on YouTube right now, give us that thumb up. I'm just going to stop putting it on YouTube. He's not going to. Don't worry. Yeah, maybe. He won't. Or I'm going to give you stinky thumbnails. <laughs> All right. Ooh, here we got a spicy one. <clears throat> From the star. 
The headline is, I'm a woman who imitated the swagger of an entitled white male. And it got results. Oh, here oh, boy, we go. Right. Imitating white male swagger can help women understand its durable power and sway. I know because I tried it. So this is like an opinion piece written in the first person by Judith Taylor. All right. A few years ago, my sociological imagination... Aw- okay. Okay. All right, lady. We're already getting into it. Relax. My sociological imagination awoke when watching Friday Night Lights, the once popular teen drama about football in Texas. In response to the figure of Coach Taylor, a handsome, mostly angry, but putatively good-hearted leader. Coach Taylor and I could not be more different. He is short-tempered, unilateral, man of few words. He doesn't believe anyone deserves an explanation. As a professor, I explain my decisions, grading, data, and assigned readings to a fault. In seminars, I ensure each student is heard and has a full chance to participate and be part of the scholarly conversation. I don't know why this woman needs to imitate anybody. She's like pumping her tires pretty good here. I she know. She's, awesome. yeah, she's, shees fantastic. We could all take a page out of Judith Taylor's playbook, apparently. Yes. If students seek my counsel, I follow up with more readings or questions to make sure I have helped them. These are, I understand, gendered behaviors, which I perform with colleagues as well. What? 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 I don't get it. Being a good professor is gendered behavior? So only women could be good professors? Is that what she's saying? I don't like the sounds of this. These are... Oh, sorry. I already read that. Um, Which I perform with colleagues as well. I make sure junior faculty members get support and attend. So this woman is just pumping her tires. I aim for inclusivity. Explain decisions with five paragraph essays to my chair or in faculty meetings. Blah, blah, blah. Imagine then... My puzzlement, watching a leader whose monosyllabic brevity accrues such respect. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't even know what half those words mean in that sentence. Paper and pen in hand, I observed Coach Taylor making note of his phrases. So this, this, this woman, she goes home, right, from being this world star professor. Yeah. World star professor. And she busts out her notebook, and she's watching Friday Night Lights, and she's, like, writing the phrases down. Oh, yeah. Look at Coach Taylor. I'm so much better than him. I can't wait to imitate him. <laughs> Phrases such as, we're not going to do that. And, nope, not going to do it. Or, you're better than this. Or, stay away from dumb gentlemen. And, don't quit. <laughs> What's this? Uh, okay, keep all right. going. All right, all right. She says, actors on the receiving end of Coach Taylor's missives usually respond quite positively and fall in step with him. Appreciating his brick wall approach. Probably because it's a TV show. At home, his utterances appear even more yeah. brief to his wife. Don't ask me that. Or, damn, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and to his daughter, if you're wondering if he's thinking about you, he's not. Ooh, Coach Taylor. Or Coach, whatever your name is. You're so rude. Oh, his name is Coach Taylor. Yeah. And yeah. this woman's name is Judith Taylor. Mm, coincidence? Mm, coincidence. Oh, it's very next art. Oh, the line she says my last name is also Taylor. Sweeping my hair uneasily into a baseball cap, I decided to try to be as Coach Eric Taylor as possible for two weeks. I'm a five foot two white woman with glasses, shoulder length hair, wide smile, and ready eye contact. I was dubious about this stunt working. Could I truly affect male power? I don't even know what the hell that means, Dan. Me either. When students asked for alternatives to the assignment, I swallowed, paused, and said, "Not gonna happen." <laughs> They packed up and got the work done as I asked. I met a graduate student who was dragging her feet on her dissertation with, Do you have what it takes? Then just do it. She looked dumbfounded, but turned a chapter in shortly thereafter. In a faculty meeting, I, a colleague vent, ventured complex curriculum revision that I would normally have spoken at length against based on my extensive experience as a former associate chair. Instead, I let people cast about with questions and concerns, and then trying not to laugh at its simplicity, we're not going to do it. The subject was dropped. So it just sounds like this woman decided to just become mega bitch all of a sudden. Yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with male or female. Like, uh, it's a TV show character. <clears throat> we'll, we'll discuss at the end of this article. I'm, I'm interested. Keep going. All right. I came to meetings late and left early. I made jokes. You're not allowed to make jokes. Only on TV, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Crucially, I started to meet colleagues for beers more in my faculty association where I was a member of the council. I was one of the only women, and my status was quickly elevated to one of the power brokers, and I joined the executive committee. I believe drinking beer and speaking with more jocularity helped me gain respect. Coach, Coach Taylor's effect was effective for me at work. 
The same was true at home. I responded to my kids' entreaties with, don't ask me that. I opened dinner with, here's how it's going to go. Giving each person a job and no room for argument. Our household is so <clears throat> dialogical, I was afraid no one would fall for it, but they did. Things ran my way. I noticed many things. I, was, I, was co I wasn't cooperating. I was dictating, and I used a lot less energy. No one asked follow-up questions. There was less negotiation, and I didn't lose time wondering if everyone was okay with decisions. Students were more productive, and I was more effective at getting what I wanted. I will never forget that my colleagues with PhDs and augment, or, sorry, argumentation in their bones dropped a proposal after I uttered five words. Adopting white male southern swagger is pretty, is, was pretty darn effective for getting my way. What were the five words? I don't know. She didn't say. So why am I not delivering TED Talks on how women can gain power by imitating white male football coaches on TV? Because this was an experiment in effect, language, demeanor, and gender, and one I found deeply saddening. Being a good partner, mother, professor, and citizen to me has always meant being deferential, inclusive, transparent about what I was thinking, as concrete and thoughtful as possible in explaining my decisions, and collaborative with students, family, and colleagues. But these features are not often respected as signs of good leadership, and they're exhausting to perform. I won't promote getting one's way by force and intimidation. I won't promote the silencing of, dis of dissent through verb verbal muscul muscularity. Jeez, I can't read here. I was reminded of my experiment watching Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. This was like huge in the news four months ago. But yeah, it's a little less relevant this now. was a big deal. Watching uh, Brett Kavanaugh speak in favor of his own confirmation. Like he's going to speak against himself? Yeah. <laughs> Kavanaugh was a lot like Coach Taylor. Rageful, monosyllabic, sentimental about alcohol, and used to being in charge. Kavanaugh was incredulous, imperious, sneering, prideful, and monstrous in his unilateralism. <sighs> he in interrupted Democratic senators. He rolled his eyes, sobbed, raged. He failed to exhibit judicial temperament, but he also failed at basic collegiality and respect. And that might be why he was ultimately confirmed. Rage and entitlement are the purview of white men and the measure of their legitimacy. If Dan's shaking his head as I'm reading this. <laughs> if you doubt this, imagine Ruth Bader Ginsburg dancing Kavanaugh's dance. Well, she's like 95 years old. And still getting <laughs> confirmed. Bullying is the most traditional and respected form of masculinity. The ghastly theater of Kavanaugh's address indicates that men on whose shoulders all vulnerability in the U.S. rests are allowed to be disrespectful, tight-lipped engines of rage, focused only on their own power and unflinching in the face of others' pain. Clear eye, full hearts, can't lose, says Coach Taylor. Indeed. The story of power in the U.S. isn't a parable in sharing. It's a parable of identity-based inequality in which the southern white male looms large, and football, beers, and fathers are much more than just a sport, a drink, and a role in the family. Kavanaugh's confirmation has been a breathtaking elucidation of how white male power is performed. So women, grab a baseball hat, a set of terse, controlling phrases, and a pint. Try it on. Coming to understand our cultural sacred cows is the only way to send them out to pasture. All right, there's a lot oh, to unpack boy. in there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, well, I think first off, what, like I don't think this is a a white male trait. I don't think this is a male trait. I think anybody can have this trait. I've met tons of women who are complete bitches. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, it's it has nothing to do who with her at all. <clears throat> yeah, who are aggressive and and act that way like she was acting. There's tons. Tons of like that, yeah. Like it should, it's a personality trait. It does. It has nothing to do with gender. Yeah, it sounds like okay. Maybe this personality of this TV show coach is you know pretty opposite from what this woman is normally like. Yeah, fair enough. But she seems to think like, oh, I'm gonna try to be like this guy from TV. It's like ridiculous. And what's it like? There's TV shows with women who act the same kind of way. Yeah, there's tons of TV shows. Yeah, but this they, woman just picks one thing, like, and then writes an article about it. Yeah, then you couldn't write an article about it, right? And then it would be just you wouldn't make it on the scruffcast. If you make it on the scruffcast, you're a big deal. God, it is tough being a straight white man these days. I'll tell you that. Right? The most persecuted group around. Seriously, we had it good for a long time. <laughs> we did, and now the hammer's coming down. We don't like it, but we're not gonna fight back because we don't care. No, we're too cool. We're indifferent. We're like the cool kids in school, where it's like. You know when you go through the phase where the cool thing is being like, whatever. That's us. We're like, whatever. Yeah. And also, just the way it's written. I feel like this lady's trying to like flex her muscles of like, look how smart I am. I used the word monosyllabic twice. I've never heard that word in my life. No. Yeah. 
I'm surprised you knew how to read it. Like, say it. That was good. Pfft, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so all in all, this woman is just a c word. <laughs> Crazy. Oh. <clears throat> ay 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 ay. All right. Now now going to another article here, which has people making a little more sense. You know, thinking of things a little better. Taking a better approach. So Chelsea, as in the uh, soccer team in the English Premier League. To, so Chelsea to send racist fans on Auschwitz trips instead of banning them. Chelsea wants to send racist supporters on trips to the Nazi concentration camp Auschwitz instead of imposing banning orders. The club's owner, Roman Abramovich, who is Jewish, is at the forefront of the initiative designed to tackle anti-Semitism among fans. Chelsea want to offer supporters caught being racist the chance to attend education courses at the Second World War concentration camp in Poland instead of being banned from attending matches at the Premier League club. If you just ban people, you will never change their behavior, the Chelsea chairman Bruce Buck told The Sun. This policy gives them the chance to realize what they have done to make them want to behave better. In the past, we would take them from the crowd and ban, and ban them for up to three years. So that's a hefty ban. Now we say, you did something wrong. You have the option. We can ban you, or you can spend some time with our diversity officers. I'll, uh, like, I'm all for this, but diversity yeah. officers? I don't like that, yeah, that's that gay. word. That's a gay name. Right, like, oh, I'm a diversity officer for Chelsea, English <laughs> Premier League club. <laughs> um, I'm going to get paid for a job like that. Yeah. Chelsea publicly criticized a number of their own fans for anti-Semitic chanting against rivals Tottenham in September 2017. Buck said, it's hard to act when a group of 50 or 100 people are chanting. That's virtually impossible to deal with or try to drag them out of the stadium. But if we have individuals that we can identify, we can act. The club sent a delegation to Auschwitz for the annual March of the Living in April, while 150 staff and supporters went on a day trip in June to the site which once housed Nazi death camps while Poland was under German occupation. Buck said the trips to Auschwitz were really important and effective, and we will consider more as well as other things that will affect people. So I wonder how they determined if it was effective, like there was less racist chance at the games. Could it just be like those people didn't go back? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but they, uh, they, I don't know. this is a pretty good idea, though. Yeah, I'm on board with this. I mean, yeah, yeah. Better than just banning them, right? And at least you know, it sort of gives them a different perspective. Yeah, you're trying to be like proactive, I guess, and trying to help these people get through things. I've been to Auschwitz, by the way. Have you? I have. You knew that, didn't you? I did, but I had to act surprised to listen ah, to Dan. Okay. Oh, come on. They know you know things. Yeah, I went to I Auschwitz do. last year, the year before. <sighs> and that was just as part of a trip. You weren't at a football game yelling racist things. Uh, the Scrubcast no, isn't no. all about that. <clears throat> Don't remember no, no. those Jamaican accents we did 10 minutes ago. You saying both, man. <laughs> The Chelsea Supporters Trust is in favor of the plan, while the Football Supporters Federation also lent support. The campaign's and diversity manager, Anwar Udin, said that the FSF have long advocated and promoted educational sessions with supporters found to have used discriminatory language. We completely agree with Bruce Buck that simply banning people doesn't change the behavior or attitudes, and we applaud Chelsea for being one of the first Premier League clubs to so publicly advocate this approach and hope others follow their example. On, w- on Wednesday, Chelsea previewed a new film at the Houses of Parliament aimed at raising awareness of the consequences of anti-Semitism, interspersing images of offensive chants, social media posts, alongside images from the Holocaust. Buck told the club's website, we're just trying to make a dent in the anti-Semitism in this world. Over time, we hope to make a real contribution for good to society. So I agree. I think this was a good idea. Yeah. Right? I mean, ob- obviously, the ideal would be you don't have any of these people coming to the games and... You know, making these chants, whatever they may be, but this is a good way to deal with it because the owner of Chelsea, like Roman Ab- Abramovich, I've heard of him before. He's he's like a billionaire. He's like a Russian billionaire. This guy's yeah. like loaded. Um, if you wanted, you could snap his fingers and probably have these people just taken care of Putin style. Right? Yeah. No, uh, but he's Jewish, right? And so imagine you own the team and your your team's playing against you know another and team. Your own fans are yeah, and you hate not what you are. Yeah. Would you be like? Let's turn the other cheek. We'll send them to Auschwitz. We will educate them. Yada, yada, yada. Or would you be like, get the hell out of my stadium? Yeah, that's probably the way I'd go about it. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, get out. You owe me money. You owe me extra money now. So kudos to this guy for yeah. taking the right approach. Auschwitz is wild, though. Like, well, obviously. But, uh, like, it was, it was fascinating being there. 
I would never go back. Um, once was enough, but um, it was pretty freaky. I don't know. There was like, there's still like a lot of stuff there you see, right? Like, and they and they really like. That's another thing that they do well there too. Is like they really like push the fact like they have like, um, like all like kind of closed off in like glass cases they have like women's hair and like ponytails and stuff like that they're really? like forced to shave their heads they have it all they're like they have like all like a bunch of like the prisoner's shoes and they have like and they put all the little kids shoes at the front and stuff like that just to like just drive home like the point right yeah just really make an impact <clears throat> yeah on. they still have like the ovens and stuff and like it's brutal That's crazy because because yeah. you hear about this stuff right and you like you know, you'll read about in high school when you learn about World War Two and stuff. But it almost feels like it's so bizarre and so it's, long it's ago. So it's eerie. hard to believe it's real. Right? It's so eerie. Yeah. Right? But I guess it's some real terrible <laughs> shit that actually happened. <laughs> the funniest part of when we were there, there shouldn't be a funny part, but of course there is. Um, there was like, I gotta say this quietly. I think your your landlords are of Asian descent, are they not? <laughs> they are. I hope they don't okay. listen to this podcast. Okay, so I'll say this quietly. <laughs> so there's. <laughs> so you know how like. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk really close into the mic, so then they'll be able to hear us better. But yeah, the waveforms are, are going good. Right okay, now. all right. So uh, when we were there, there was like um, Asian like tour group, and uh, like you like they're straight out of like China or wherever they were from, right? And uh, there's like r- like running around with like cameras, taking pictures of everything, like laughing and stuff. Like <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah, straight like so Asian, like iPads out, like taking photos of everything, selfies. Yeah, of it course, was, it's always it was brutal. Take a picture. It was tough, and like everybody, like you walk through there, and everybody's like pretty quiet, right? And they're all, all walking through, like, wait, that's all, what that, like, <laughs> oh man, it's <was> just brutal. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty funny watching them do that because, like, that, that uh, okay, I'm done. I'm not. <laughs> we're not. We're not gonna. They're just good people. Disparage the name. No, no, they're good people over there. All right. Well, they're just so excited about everything, you know. You know, it's the way to live. I wish I was excited. No, I know. I know what you mean. It's like, like when you go to the movies and something happens, it's not that funny. And then you have that guy who's like, hoo, 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 hoo. Yeah. And he's so I want to be that guy. He's, he's just so entertained. Yeah. But you know he's having a way better time than you. Yeah. It's like we, um, at the the store I work at, like a, I talked about this before, it's like a, uh, you know, a boutique um, farmer's market type thing. Yeah. And we have a lot of like. Uh, boutique. Boutique. Like that. That's a good one, eh? We have a lot of, um, like, Asian people that come through and, like, straight up, like, iPads on selfie sticks, like, taking photos of, like... They have selfie sticks for iPads? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen them. Oh, I guess They're from Asia. You gotta look... You gotta go over there and find them. They got everything there. And they have, um... And, but they'll like they'll like hold up a banana and, like, take photos with a banana or, like, a... Like, a pear or something like that. It's ridiculous. And they're just, like, having the time of their lives. They'll spend, like, an hour in the store just, like, taking photos with, like green beans like I, it's it's ridiculous dude but um, just sounds like a fun way to live your life being excited by everything oh like absolutely kid, yeah right huh when you're a kid everything's so excited yeah yeah you give um, a kid a cardboard box and they're like wow this is amazing you give me a cardboard box and i'm like i gotta cut this shit up and put <laughs> God, it i gotta dispose of this yeah it's not gonna fit in the recycling box uh to be a kid but you know what it's not always so easy for kids these days because as the next article points out because this was from back in Halloween time. And what what time are we at right now? Uh, we're at thirty eight minutes. Damn, let's, Jesus! Let's start getting spoiled. All right, oh. all right. The next article comes from six abc dot com. Children over twelve face jail time for trick or treating in some towns. <laughs> let's start with a big question: How old is too old to trick or treat? Dan, what do you think? How old is too old? Or do we want to return at the end of the article? Uh, we can do that. All right. Let's start with a big question. How old is too old to trick or treat? Well, some cities not only suggest an age li- an age that will send kids over the legal limit to dr- jail for dressing up and going door to door looking for candy. I read that so terribly. Yeah, I'm going to reread that. Well, please. Some cities not only suggest an age, they will send kids over the legal limit to jail for dressing up and going door to door looking for candy. Let's start in Chesapeake, Virginia, where anyone over the age of 13 who is caught trick-or-treating can be sent to jail for up to six months and fined. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. (laughs) These kids aren't going to have ID. (laughs) No, I know. In Newport News, Virginia, that's the name of a town, Newport News? 
In Newport News, Virginia, yeah, kids can weird. trick or treat until seventh grade or until they turn twelve. After that, it's a misdemeanor. Wow. Several North Carolina cities have similar legal restrictions for twelve or thirteen year olds, as well as a nine PM curfew for all. And around here in parts of South Jersey, the curfew is seven PM with kids in Upper Deerfield Township also being told twelve is the official cutoff. That's outrageous. Oh, yeah, that's unfortunately a... this article doesn't have any more information. I had that's... four months to like look it up, but I'm not gonna bother, obviously. That was rough. But to jail for six months? To jail? How do you put a kid in jail? Yeah, I know he's going to like juvie. He's not like sitting out there with you know Paul Bernardo, but oh, crackhead boobs! Huh. Thank goodness. But, but still, like, well, what age did you stop trick or treating? Uh, maybe grade eight, grade nine. You didn't go. Uh, only one. I think year we in went out. I, I think we went out in grade nine once in high school. I, I went we to went. grade ten. Grade ten was well, my final year, and I remember I had a mask of like an old Asian man, like Confucius, mm-hmm. right? And I was wearing it, and I went up to a door and. Oh, so got, you did? You did Asian face. Well, Dan, this was like ten years ago. You did black face. You did years Asian ago. face. Right? Equally as racist. Equally as racist, of course. Yeah. But they were selling it at you know party city or party party. Fair enough. Whatever. Can't get those Obama masks anymore. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Um, and I remember I went up for candy, and no, someone no more was dressing like, your friends up as Randy Jackson. <laughs> and uh, I went up to the door, and the guy's like, "Oh, Confucius is getting a little old there." I so he like, he could tell, eh? Like, well, I guess I was tall enough, but I just want to be like, "Sure, old man." I still got my candy. Get my candy. Yeah, no, I never got anything said. But um, yeah, no, I think like yeah, uh, yeah, fourteen, fifteen, probably in right there. We stopped. Which I think that's a fair age, but like at the same time, I think, I think it's like fourteen up to the discretion there. of the people giving out candy. Yeah, if if like someone came to my door and they're too old, I'd be like, "You're not getting candy." My mom but, said uh, she used to get people sometimes, just like uh, women uh, in Brampton, come with bags, like just women, like older, like a, adult women, just like, like not with no up. kids or anything. No, 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 and they would come. Dude, I saw a woman. I think she said that earlier today. It happened while I was walking anyway. to work, and she had like a purple trench coat on and a purple hat, like with a big brim. Yeah, like and that purple hat was like pulled down so you like could barely even see her face. And I was like, only an old lady would wear this and pull that off. Yeah. Did I tell you about the the woman or man we saw in uh, back in August when we were doing the GM meeting for the fancy pool? Me and Anthony on the subway. I uh, no, I don't think so. You guys know Anthony; he's been on the podcast. Yes, and the GM twice. means for our, our Scruffcast Fantasy Hockey. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a different thing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we're on the on the subway, and we're we're standing across from each other in the doorways, right? So this man or woman comes on, and he, like you don't know anymore with these. I don't know what to. I don't know what to call him. I didn't even know if it was a woman turning into a man, a man turning into a woman. Um, so it was one of them, and she comes up. And she like stands between us, and she starts like shooting her arms up. I'm like I'm like doing the motion right now, but you guys can't see it, obviously. Phew, phew. And she was like shooting her arms up like this, and she was like, I, I forget what she was doing. She was like calling for Zeus and stuff like that, and we're like, what the fuck is going on here? And so then, she, of course, like Anthony like makes eye contact with him or her, <laughs> and then so she's so him or her or he or she starts talking to Anthony, and like like telling him her life story or whatever and then like so she or he gets off at the next stop and i was like what happened there he's like oh she started telling me about how like her cat is zeus and like her dog is this or that i don't know it's pretty funny just a bunch of nuts you see out there well that that's toronto for you yeah that's toronto for you uh i saw a homeless guy at where i got off the subway on the way to work he's actually got a t- like a camping tent set up this guy's like he he's he's pitched a tent to he's stay. He's invested in the homeless life. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, just a little scruff cash shout out for the homeless guy if he ever listens. <laughs> All right, on to the next article here. Huffington Post. Hudson's Bay removes mate can. Uh, you know what? I, I don't want to do this one. You don't want to do this one? No, I don't. That's all. That's all it takes. Yeah, I don't want to do this. Got one. vetoed. I should have deleted it before. All right, on to the next article. I don't think it's that good. It's stupid. Uh, <laughs> as if these other ones aren't stupid but that one's stupid <laughs> <laughs> that one didn't make the scruff cast cut so you know it was a bad one imagine the ones they normally don't see you, oh, yeah, you know how lucky you are so this is a good one this should almost be the last one okay then save it for the last one all right i'll save for the, i'll save for the last one what's next here um, i know which one you're saving for the last one i could tell already all right 
Designed to provoke French Town's ad featuring woman tied to train tracks deemed legal. This comes from ABC News. French Town's controversial high-speed train poster of woman tied to tracks deemed legal. An advertisement depicting a screaming woman tied to tracks as a train advances does not promote violence against women, a French court has ruled. The controversial poster created by the southern town of Beziers in December last year was made to celebrate the arrival of high-speed TGV trains to the area. It was captioned, With TGV, she would have suffered less. Jesus Christ. Holy That's crap. a bad ad. <laughs> <laughs> the poster sparked outrage among France's equality minister. A qual- they have an equality minister? That's like the whole role? I'd be pissed if my taxes were paying for this. Yeah, yeah, equality. Equality. The poster sparked outrage among France's equality minister and feminist groups who mounted a legal challenge after drawing parallels between the poster and the death of Emily Hallowen, 34, local paper, 20 minutes reported. Miss Hallowen was killed after her husband tied her to TGV train tracks in a murder-suicide in northern France just four months before the town of Beziers debuted its campaign. Oh, boy. Jesus Christ. That's why I probably added the article in here because I was like, what the hell are they thinking? Yeah, yeah. The town's far-right mayor defended the advert. See, you notice how they throw far-right in there? Because they want to show you this guy's politics is why he doesn't like the ad or he does like the ad. Yeah, he does like the ad because he's far-right. The town's far-right mayor, Robert Menard, defended the advert following the uproar, accusing critics of political correctness. Writing on Twitter, he asked, Should we ban thousands of examples of feminicide in cinema, cartoons, and music clips? And then he has, uh, in his tweet here, he linked some pictures from uh, different movies and stuff. Yeah. The court in Montpellier said the poster did not promote violence against women in spite of its doubtful and provocative humor, 20 Minutes reported. Writing on Twitter following the win, Mr. Menard described the case as an inquisition in petticoats. I don't know what that means, but... I don't necessarily think it provokes violence against women. I just think it's, oh, man, that's a... Yeah, I don't think it's, like, specifically promoting violence against women. That was poor timing for that 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 one. Yeah, that ad, yeah. Well... Even with without the the case before of like this with, actually with happening, TGV she would have suffered less. What? What, what a are terrible you ad! There's plenty of better ways to you know promote yeah, a high be, speed be like, rail. Okay, just spitball in here. My ad would be like you know you see a family eating alone right at a restaurant. And they're like, oh you know where's dad? He's not here. Or where's mom? She's not here. And it's like with TGV you would have made it on time for your kids' dinner or whatever. That Boom. Happened. Boom. Just way like better. that. Yeah, way yeah. better. What the hell were they thinking? Oh, my God. That's a bad that, ad. that took so, you all of five seconds to come up with. Like, that ad was terrible to begin with. And then when you have the real-life scenario that played out, like, four yeah. months before, you don't think that would have been... I, I thought that, like, Googled tagline this? was bad enough. And then, like, yeah, four months before, a woman actually died on that, like, rail line. Yeah. In a murder-suicide. Ay-yi-yi. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Okay. I just saw another article that I remember, which these are both good. Um, So we have this article and then two more to close it out. And the last two are are really good, I remember. What? I I only have two more. Uh, No, because I skipped one. You'll see. You'll see. All right. Oh, boy. Okay. Detroit police officers fight each other and undercover op gone wrong. (laughs) An internal investigation has been launched at the Detroit Police Department after two different precincts got into a turf war as they converged on an east side neighborhood. Neighbors who live on Andover on Detroit's east side will be the first to tell you this area is known for constant drug activity. Definitely a drug problem in our neighbor for years, said one resident, but I don't think anyone can stop it. (laughs) Said Um, one resident as she took a hit of her crack pipe? Yeah. (laughs) Ain't nobody got time for that. (laughs) They're getting in the way of my crack pipes. On Thursday, Detroit police certainly tried, but maybe too hard. Sources say it started when two special ops officers from the 12th Precinct were operating a push-off on Andover near 7 Mile. Oh, isn't that where uh, Eminem's from? Or eight. Th- that's 8, eight Mile. mile. Yeah. Yeah. Probably just one, the next block, One, one mile yeah. more hardcore. Uh, that is when two undercover officers pretended to be dope dealers waiting for eager customers to approach and then arrested potential buyers and seized their vehicles. But this time, instead of customers, special ops officers from the 11th Precinct showed up. Not realizing they were fellow officers, they ordered the other undercover officers to the ground. <laughs> Fox 2 is told the rest of the special ops team from the 12th Precinct showed up, and officers began raiding a house in the 19,300 block of Andover. Jeez, they got some crackhead boo-boo-ass street numbers <laughs> yeah, in Detroit. 
But instead of fighting crime, officers from both precincts began fighting with each other. Sources say guns were drawn and punches were thrown while the homeowners stood and watched. <laughs> <laughs> the department's top cops were notified along with internal affairs. Each officer involved is now under investigation as the department tried to determine what went wrong. You've got to have to have more communication, I guess, said the resident. I don't understand what happened about that. Communicate. <laughs> so this is just a guy's house they were going to raid, and then his door gets busted open. The cops are just beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> and now he's, like, giving, giving a little snippets to the... Uh, yeah. He's taking a hit of These guys got to communicate a little better if they want to arrest me. Fox 2 was told one of the units had body camera video that detailed the entire incident. That's now part of the internal investigation, and we are working to get our hands on it. The, this is the news organization saying they're working to get their hands on it. Not the Scruffcast. No. We don't have that power. Yeah. Uh, we're told... Well, you, we've had a lot of cases on the Scruffcast where we mentioned stuff, and then things changed. True. You might notice the world's been a little stagnant the last four months. We're back to make a change. We're told Top Brass doesn't plan to comment on this until next week. Seeing as how this was four months ago, so they probably commented. They probably commented But we, we don't bother getting a comment for you, so... Yeah. You don't like it? Email us at scruffcastgmail.com. Too bad. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Just going to say. Yeah, that's funny. All right. There's two articles left. I don't know which one I want to finish on. We I only we have, have one, one that here, involves a dog, so? and we have one that involves a sea otter. Oh, the sea otter one. Yeah. Which okay. one do we want to finish on? Go with the sea otter. No, 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 no. Finish with the dog. Finish with the dog? All right. Yeah. Sea otter. Go with the sea next. otter. <clears throat> All right, from CTV News. Monterey, California. California's Monterey Bay Aquarium has apologized after some people perceived a tweet about a sea otter as body shaming. <laughs> like, uh, I'm already, like... Don't these people have anything better going on in their life? A sea otter. Yeah. A sea otter. <laughs> That's what... Okay. The aquarium on Tuesday tweeted a picture of Abby... An otter who helps train orphaned otters how to survive in the wild. The tweet featured social media words and phrases such as thick, chonk, and oh lod she coming, which are, <laughs> uh, which are often used to describe someone who's overweight. I like that last one. Oh lod she coming. Oh, like, lad, like, she get out coming. the way. Yeah. People took offense. The aquarium on Wednesday tweeted a multi part apology that it called a learning moment. It apologized and said it was unaware of the connotations associated with some some of the memes. The aquarium says Abby is looking fit. So he, here's the tweet. Uh, here, I'll read word for word. It has a picture of, quite frankly, a fat sea otter, which is yeah. surprising because this sea otter is like working out and helping the other sea otters. I'm yeah. So yeah. fat, I don't know. Abby is a thick girl. Thick with two Cs. T-I-H-C-C. Abby is a thick girl. What an absolute unit. She chonk. Look at the size of this lady. Oh, Lodge, she coming. Another internetism. So, first off, my, my gripe would be they're going in a little too hard with, like, look at us. We're funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Follow-up tweet. Hey, everyone. It has come to our attention that some of the references in this tweet are problematic and insensitive. We're posting here in the thread so that people who have engaged with this tweet will join us in our learning moment. If our tweet alienated you... Please know that we are deeply sorry and that we offer our sincerest apologies. If you follow our feed, we often reference popular memes to talk about the ocean. In this case, the memes used had connotations we were unaware of until now. We're only halfway through the apology, by the way. <laughs> In particular, several terms referenced originated from African American vernacular English, AAVE. What? I don't know. What, what is that? Is. I don't know. Slang? I, I guess. And specifically reference black women's bodies. <sighs> I had to pause there for the for the side. Mm. Using them in a sea otter meme without that background makes insinuations we never intended. We need to do better. Our mission is to inspire conversation of the ocean. And we're thankful for your support as we try to advance that mission on social media. We're also thankful for those of you out there pointing out our blind spots and how we can improve. Thanks, everyone. This is ridiculous so it's a stupid tweet okay about a fat sea otter and they're you know trying to be edgy like look at us millennials we're hip absolute unit. come learn about the ocean right with our fat sea otter so stupid. and they had to apologize like like if you're out there complaining like oh my god don't you know where the word chunk comes from that means somebody who's chunky and it comes from but a only African a black American woman vernacular english 
Like, don't you have anything else going on better in your life? You're more pathetic than the lady who is, like, intimidate, imitating that Coach Taylor guy. <laughs> yeah, I like, know. It's so stupid. And then their apology is, like, so long. Here, here's what it's I want to It's a four-tweet apology. Like, who decided, okay, we, we have to apologize. People are raging on Twitter. You know what the problem is? The problem is Twitter. Because they'll have this tweet, and then it will be like become like a Twitter moment, and it'll be like, okay, because, like, three people will tweet at them and be like, oh, my God, this is so offensive. Yeah. And Twitter will turn into a Twitter moment and be like, people are freaking out over the fat yeah. otter meme. Outrage over sea otters. Fat shaming. Yeah, and then you'll get, like, four or five tweets like, hashtag boycott, not my aquarium. Like, stupid <laughs> shit like that. And then, like, somebody working at the aquarium is like, we we gotta, we oh gotta back shit. this. This is a PR disaster. <laughs> Like, are they really going to lose any money? Is, no. Are people really not going to come? Is this really compromising their goal for conversation of the ocean? But it's appeasing the 1%. It's so stupid. Maybe not even the 1%, the 0.001%. Dude, if... That's all that is. If you read these tweets and you got offended somehow, you're dumber than the sea otter. Yeah. Seriously. John, are you calling the sea otter dumb? I'm just saying, you're dumber than this sea otter. You're dumber than this are thick you, girl, absolute you unit. Are you shaming this thick unit's intelligence? Maybe by thick unit. I don't know like if I plain. use that right. Yeah, I don't know if maybe we're gonna be, you know, the next on the the hit list here. We might be. Bring it on. Yeah, we. You can't take us down. We're self published. <laughs> the only thing that takes us down is our own laziness. That's right. Four months. So you got four months. All right, Dan. These animals, they can't catch a break. They just can't it's catch a true. break. It's <laughs> true. Because coming from metro.co.uk, uh, I know they're listening to Mr. Here accents. we go again. Metro.co.uk. Soak in the headline here, listeners. Dog accused of racist hate crime for pooing outside someone's front door. <laughs> Dog accused of being racist. <laughs> <clears throat> a dog has been blamed for a racial hate crime for fouling outside the front door of somebody's home. The poo and run is among 2,500 reported cases of hate crimes logged by the Met Police because the victim perceived this to be a racial incident. <sighs> Other allegations investigated by officers in 2015 and 2016 included an envelope being opened and released, or sorry, opened and resealed, and a man telling library staff he was campaigning for Brexit. That's a hate crime? Hey, I don't know. And open a re- what the hell. The 2,507 alleged hate incidents were revealed after a freedom of information request by the Mail on Sunday. That's like this uh, thing where the media can just say, "Hey, give us this information about all these crimes and stuff," and just get the government's like, "Sure, take all of our information." <laughs> yeah, for no reason. I wonder if we can make those. Maybe we're we're, we're kind of me- we're kind of media, yeah, right? We're journalistic. Yeah. Well. I feel like if you've listened to the Scruffcast, you're like you've learned stuff over the over a year. We've been doing the show for over a year. Yeah, sort of, yeah, so, so, sort, sort of, of, yeah, sort of, <laughs> right? Um, but you would have learned stuff. So we're we're kind of we're almost there. Remember when we did our investigative journalism on Ticketmaster? We signed into that other website. Oh, we but did. We never too. managed to make an account. But, oh, that was but, good. But we investigated for the good for us. We did that a little bit. We are good. I feel like we need another. We deserve another four month vacation. I think so. Next stop, Tahiti. In the dog fouling incident, the log read: "An unknown dog has fouled outside of victim address, and the victim perceived this to be a racial incident." So it all it all goes based on, I guess, what the victim thought. Okay. Yeah. 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 In another case, it was suggested a barking dog was a hate crime. Police wrote: "Suspect dog barking at victim." That's the line written for the crime. Suspect dog barking at victim. And this got logged in the hate crimes. So stupid. Yes. David Davies. Oh, my God. What a bad name. (laughs) What was this guy's? David Davies. Parents are just jerks. (laughs) David Davies, Tory MP and former special constable, said the recording of such non-crimes was a waste of police time. Well, now I'm on David Davies' side. He might be right. This is part of the reason police struggle to investigate serious offenses, such as home burglaries, he told the paper. People need to start thinking more carefully before they call the police. 
Other complaints included a person who felt a bus driver had given them a racist look. How is that even possible? (laughs) And an angry dad who called police when his daughter lost a tennis match because he believed the umpire to be racist. (laughs) Informant feels his daughter was subjected to racial discrimination at a tennis match where line calls went against her. The police log read. Disputes between neighbors were common among the reported incidents, including one person who battled with their next-door neighbor over parking and, this in quotes, recently found a dead rat in garden and perceives this to be racist. What? Everything's racist in 2018. Maybe, maybe there was just a dead rat in their garden. Yeah. Current rules see police record any allegation described as motivated by prejudice as a hate incident, even if it's not serious enough to be regarded as a crime. Control room staff are required to note down the details of the complaint, even if someone does not want any police action to be taken. Official figures published in October revealed hate crimes had soared over the past year. I wonder why. But it only takes into account those reported to police. Nearly 2,000 incidents are reported every week, a rise of 17% compared to last year. Oh, boy. According to the Home Office, there were 94,098 hate crimes recorded in 2017-2018. <laughs> it's, it's no wonder it's rising because people could be like i went out for dinner and my steak was overcooked and they did that because i'm not a white guy yeah racist. exactly i was at a french restaurant and french people don't like me racist like going back to the dog because that was kind of like the yeah that was the article, that article in there like the only reason i could i could see that being like if if the guy's neighbor was racist towards him previously and then took his dog and made his dog defecate on his like in front of his door then i could see him being like that's a hate crime i could see that but if the dog just went up and pooed by himself at the front door but by by definition a hate crime is racially motivated so here's the issue i have let's say you know to keep it in simple terms one of the neighbors is white one of the neighbors is black right yeah different races if the white neighbor didn't like the black neighbor for some reason or the black neighbor didn't like the white neighbor Either or, right? Race has nothing to do with these people hating each other. Yeah. It could just be he doesn't like the neighbor because the neighbor's a dick. Yeah, could have absolutely. nothing to do with his race. But if the neighbor is a different race, he could be like, oh, this is a hate crime. It was racially motivated. That's why he doesn't like me. No, I just hate you. Yeah. If like, you're white and the same person, I would still hate you. If you're black and the same person, I'd still hate you. Like, Yeah, like, like yeah. D- douchebaggery knows no bounds of race <laughs> or gender. That's or a fact. Anything, right? Yes. Yeah. And that could just easily be the case. I'd like that for like our first Scruffcast t-shirt. Douchebaggery knows no bounds. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Some Scruffcast merch. Oh, I, yeah, I do like that. But yeah, but I, I guess with the way they perceive these hate crimes in the in the UK, it's just a... He spoiled my crumpets. It's because he doesn't like me because of my race. <laughs> That's obviously it. But at least we've got David Davies on the case. Yeah, imagine your police officer, right? Or you're manning the nine one one phones if they mm-hmm. if nine one one is the same number they use over there, and uh, it's like, I found a r- dead rat in my garden. It's a hate crime because my neighbor doesn't like me because I'm Mexican. There should be like a um, like a screening process. You know what I mean? Like yeah, a three, a three stage screening process where it goes to like, and if it's not good enough to pass the first one, just like, no, sorry, we can't file that. I almost feel like it should be if it. It's deemed like non-trivial, or, or like if, it, or sorry, if it's deemed like a trivial, and you're like wasting the government's money and police officers' you should time, be fine. Stuff, you should be fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you should. Yeah. So the, these people are getting in trouble. Like, I mean, they're hardcore over there in the UK, right? Oh, the dog pooed. Oh, that's a hate crime. Sorry, lassie, you're charged. Remember that guy who got like eight months in jail for flipping off the laser jammer? Oh yeah, right? like they're hardcore over there. They, they are. They don't, like it. they don't mess around. Bunch of nuts. Oi, <laughs> cookie British. <laughs> Oi, you and your nuts. Oh, all oh, crazy. All right, all right. Holy Jesus! <laughs> that was the final article. That was a we? long one. But we came back strong. Both of us, they've been missing out. They've been missing us. Hopefully, we brought it this week. Not 100% sure if we did, but we might have. But, but you know what? This was like a, just sort of leftover articles over the last like couple months scraped together. Yeah. I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah, you're right. It's like that episode of... Uh, I feel like us and the listeners, right? It's like that episode of Friends 
where the two pages of the recipe book get stuck together. Yeah. So it's like half a dessert and half a shepherd's pie they made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the food is just so shit, right? I think it was originally supposed to be a dessert, but it tastes like shepherd's pie. And they're too afraid to tell them like, oh, no, this is shitty. That's like this, right? Like we're over here delivering this dessert slash pie. And the listeners, they're not going to. They're too afraid to tell us that we suck. They're too afraid to tell us that we suck, yeah. Well, if you gain, if you work up the courage to do tell us we suck, you can email us. Scruffcast at gmail.com. You can tweet us at Scruffcast. And find us on the Instagram, Scruff, the Scruffcast. At the Scruffcast. It's been a little stagnant, but we're going to rework it. Partially because we have as well. Yes. Okay. Um, Or if you're on YouTube, you can just leave a comment and tell us. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Button. Click the subscribe button. Hit that bell icon. I was about to smash yeah. that like. Hit that bell icon. I've been watching a lot of YouTube yeah. videos recently. I always hear that one. Uh, okay. So, if you guys remember, we got our end of the podcast segment. segment Hero segments. and Jabroni of the Week. So, we want to start with I, I Hero think or we, Jabroni? I think we always start out with Jabroni. I don't even remember anymore. Yeah, I think we started with Jabroni because we'd like to end it on a positive note. Okay. So, we had a lot of articles. I got. I got to look back at the list. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Okay. I'll start off with my jabroni of the week. Let's hear Judith it. Taylor. Okay, for the listeners, if you don't remember, that was the woman who took a page at a Coach Taylor's playbook and just decided to be a bitch in her life at work. Pretty much at home. She gets she jabroni of the week. Results. Yep. Okay. My jabroni of the week. So she was like the easy choice. But I think I'm going to go with Jabroni of the Week. Mm, it's a tough one. I think I'm going to go with the Monterey Aquarium for apologizing like a bunch of little bitches about, ah, the, about the fat otter. Okay, yeah. So if they stuck to their guns, they could have been Hero of the Week. They could. They would have been Hero of the Week. I, but they rolled would, over like a bunch of bitches. I would like to see more people just be like, nah. I'm, I'm not I'm not apologizing or like yeah, screw you I know or just be like and you, you get enough what? people to do that people then it would gonna... eventually just like tail off and nobody would yeah. be asking for apologies anymore be like oh well people are going to come to the aquarium anyway so screw you maybe the aquarium should have taken a page out of Judith Taylor's book if these two jabroni of the weeks collaborated hero of they the could week. have been here they could have pulled off the only the only thing guaranteed to get a hero of the week week in week out a veteran move a veteran move. A veteran move. Especially because the apology was like so long. Four tweets. We're very sorry. This comes from the vernacular angle. I get the hell That's out of right. here. That's right. So stupid. Speaking of veteran of the week. Hero of the week. No. Oh, yeah. Speaking of hero of the week. Yeah. But also veteran moves. My hero of the week goes to the Pope and his 62-year-old <laughs> uh, uh, track, track, track and field running team. Yeah, kicking it back to the very With the nuns the and podcast. everything. Good for them. You know what I mean? I hear you. To get up there on the international stage. I'm with you, Vatican. I'm with you, Pope. Pope Francis? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. John, your hero? Oh, my hero of the week. Uh, so tough. I'm trying to think. Um, I almost want to go with the guy, the skinny dipper. Okay. I like that one. Just because he's living <laughs> his best life out there. They think they had him out of the tank. He just backflip right back in there. And he started right, the night I'm coming off. out. Oh, just kidding. And he started that night off by going to Medieval Times. Yeah. That's, and then, that's such a fun And then time. beating someone up when he came out. Yeah. Getting a little, getting a little, oh, why I out of, oi, oi. A little too much of the, oi, 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 Too much of the ale. All right. So our question to ponder for next week. Yes. Which we need some answers for the question to ponder. We need, yeah, listen, we need to hear your voice. You got to write in because if, if we don't get the traction, we might just give up on the podcast, stop doing it. See, I'm not as sassy as John. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do you guys like that. I was shooting a sly look. Only Dan. You see were. I, that was very sly. Um, we'll still do it, but we want to hear you guys. You yeah. know, we're, we want to give you guys the opportunity to have your voices heard as well. Yeah, the scruff. The more the more you join in, the more fun the scruff exactly. cast is. It's like AA. What you put in is what you get out. Oh, nice. <laughs> very nice, John. <laughs> Good. Okay. All right. So the question upon it for next week is, what inanimate object do you wish you could eliminate from existence? This is a good one. I like this question because it's going to get us complaining right off the bat next week. And everybody loves complaining. Everybody loves it. All right. All right. Well, that's it. You know how to reach us. Scruffcast at gmail.com. Give us a thumb up. If you listen to this on iTunes or an Apple device, whatever, leave us a review. It will help other people find the podcast. And those other people will write in for the question of the week. 
which will take the pressure off you guys and give yeah. you more fun stuff to listen to. So go how, for it. How do we end this thing? We always end it the same way. Yeah, you always say something. You would say uh, some blah, blah, blah. challenge him out. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll catch you next week. Why don't you bring your mic back to your face? Oh, um, I was going to sit back and get comfy. Well, get comfy, and then we cut this part out. All right. Ready? Uh, we're going to put it after the credits. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Just, uh, okay. All right. <laughs> we're, we've been rolling for 20 seconds already. All right.